What is up, Packers Nation? Welcome into the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Happy Packers game day. We are all set for the football team, which is still feels weird to say, uh, versus the Green Bay Packers. Hopefully the next time Green Bay faces Washington, Washington will actually have a name for their football team, which would be nice. Uh, but until then, we will continue to break it down as Packers versus footballers. We had some news from Saturday that we need to get to first. I don't think this is unexpected by any means. Um, and it's kind of what we did expect all week is that David Bakhtiari was not activated off of the pup list. So he will not play today against Washington. We did find out that Ben Braden was moved up to the active roster. Um, and this was sort of expected. No Josh Myers, you know, obviously Bakhtiari not getting called up. Dennis Kelly is still out. There was a, you know, a spot needed as a backup offensive lineman still. Ben Braden gets called up. Uh, so he'll get the, you know, the, the call this week, but it'll probably, you know, hopefully be a, a special teams only assignment. And hopefully they don't have to go, you know, eight deep into their offensive line against Washington. But uh, Braden gets called up for this one. And then they also placed Josh Myers on IR. So he will be out this week and at least two more games. So again, I don't think any of that is super surprising. Maybe the fact that Myers went straight to IR, but I think that was always the most likely scenario. No Dominique Daphne, you know, nobody else was moved off of IR or any other designation. So uh, roster is pretty much what it is. Uh, but again, Ben Braden called up, Josh Myers placed on IR. As far as Washington, Adam Schefter did report that it doesn't sound uh, likely, or at least he said that it doesn't, you know, Washington's not optimistic that William Jackson is going to play against the Packers. So it sounds like Washington's going to be without one of their starting corners. And uh, it, it does sound like they're also going to give him up until game time and maybe do like a workout prior and see if he's able to go. But again, not optimistic was Adam Schefter's quote. So likely without a starting corner for Washington. And I think really the only other piece of news for Green Bay is that there was no Tipa Nalii call up which would lead me to believe one of two things, if not both, either Preston Smith's ready to go, or they feel like Whitney Merciless can play a decent amount of snaps. And again, it very well could be both of those things, but they only have three true edge rushers on the on the roster that are not either Preston Smith or Whitney Merciless. So they've got Hamilton, they've got Garvin, they've got Rashawn Gary. I highly doubt that they would go into the game with just those three. Now, Kingsley Kiki's played a bit on the edge, Oren Burks has played a bit on the edge, but neither of them are true edge players. Could you, against a team like Washington playing at home, get by with Garvin and Hamilton and Gary and Kiki and Oren Burks manning the edge? Maybe, right? I mean, maybe slash probably. Is it ideal? No way. But the fact that they didn't call Tipa up leads me to believe that at least one of those two is going to be active for this game, if not both. And I, I know Preston Smith's going to be chomping at the bit to, to to play in this game, hopefully get a couple sacks, start padding those stats a little bit to, to try to get some of those bonuses, but you know, plus also take it out on his old team a little bit. So I would expect... I mean, maybe expects the wrong word, but I think it has to be leaning that Preston's going to play based on just him practicing Friday, no TIPA call up. We'll see out of Preston and Whitney Merciless if both, neither, at least one of them are active, and if so, which one. Uh, but I think that might be the, the real big thing to kind of keep an eye out for as inactives are released at 10 30 a.m. Central Time. All right, let's jump into my keys to the game. So, as usual, I've got 12 keys to this game. My first one for Green Bay, there's, there's very few sticking points for the Packers in this game. I think one of them is the potential to look ahead to Arizona or at least maybe overlook Washington. Washington's not a very good football team. You're playing at home. You've got Arizona in four days going to Arizona on Thursday night football. And yeah, you're coming off a win against Chicago in Chicago. You come home for a quick cup of coffee against a bad team. You head out to Arizona and it's easy to maybe not take that team quite as seriously coming off a division win that was important on the road and looking ahead to a marquee matchup on Thursday night football. But this is not a situation where you can take your foot off the the gas. And uh, you know this Carolina team, or excuse me, this Washington team is, reminds me a little bit of Carolina from 2019, where Carolina came into Green Bay. Kyle Allen was starting at quarterback. Now Kyle Allen subsequently is the backup quarterback for Washington. Um, 
And, you know, Carolina stuck around that entire game. Not a great defense in Carolina that year, although they played uh, pretty well in that game. Kyle Allen's the starter. You know, it's just, it was not a very good football team, but they come to Green Bay. Green Bay ultimately wins by eight points. But if you remember, Carolina had that 18 play drive at the end of the game, down eight, 80 plus yards to go and try to tie the game at the end by hitting, you know, you know, getting the touchdown and the two point conversion. They couldn't get in. Green Bay holds them and holds on to an eight point lead, but that game was close throughout the entirety. That reminds me of how this game could potentially go a little bit. Maybe not the best team, but a team that kind of hangs around a little bit. And, you know, Green Bay comes away with a win at the end. But, you know, again, don't overlook Washington. Play the game. Take, you know, don't take your foot off the gas. Do everything you need to do to secure a victory because the schedule, as we all know, is about to get a whole heck of a lot harder. Number two, strong performance from the offensive line. If there's one group that needs to have a really strong game this week, it's the offensive line. Again, very few advantages that Washington has in this game, but Washington's defensive front against Green Bay's offensive line is absolutely an advantage for Washington. Now, if Green Bay's offensive line is able to play well in this game and hold Washington's stout front at bay, Green Bay has an advantage everywhere else against their defense. Their corners aren't great. Their safeties aren't great. The linebackers aren't great. Green Bay can win everywhere else. They just have to protect Rodgers and open up some of those holes for A.J. Dillon and, and Aaron Jones. So big game for the Packers offensive line. We'll see, you know, I would fully expect Elton, John Running Jr., Lucas Patrick, and so on and so forth. Billy Turner, right tackle, Royce Newman, right guard. But who's ever out there and whatever way they're lining up, it's so important that you don't let Chase Young and Montez Sweat and that entire group get going because, again, they have the ability to single-handedly wreck a game from beginning until end if you let them. Number three, at the end of the day, put everything else aside. This is Aaron Rodgers versus Taylor Heineke. That's just one of those matchups that you have to win. MVP Aaron Rodgers from a season ago versus Taylor Heineke. I know that this is not a one-on-one -on -one battle. I know that Heineke and Rodgers will never be on the field at the same time. I know that this is a team sport where it takes everyone working together. I know that there are games that Aaron Rodgers has balled out at an MVP level and still lost the game. However, more often than not, when you've got Aaron Rodgers and they're, they have Taylor Heineke, that's going to be the difference in the game. It should be in this one. Rodgers versus Heineke should be enough Everyone else has to just do their 111th because Rodgers over Heineke should take care of the rest. Number four, attack Washington's offensive line and don't be afraid to blitz. Young quarterback in Taylor Heineke, you know, they, they still have a young running back and, in, in, you know, Gibson and, you know, kind of a scat back in JD McKissick, who's not a great blitz pickup guy. Then you've got an offensive line that's missing two starters. They do have a pretty veteran group still nonetheless, but don't be afraid to attack them and see if they can handle the blitz protections and pick everything up. And if Heineke and you know that entire group can handle that with a couple players missing. So I'd like to see Joe Barry be a little bit more aggressive up front. Maybe they can get a turnover out of it, uh, but I would not be afraid to attack Washington's line and see if they can potentially get some pressure or maybe even a turnover. Number five, for the love of all things holy, get a stop in the red zone, uh, please. The one, I'm just sick of the, the talking point, right? Like it'd be nice if we didn't have to talk about the red zone defense next week. But two, it's just you're well past due. And we, you know, everyone would like to see some form of uh, competence from the defense in the red zone to just say, okay, it is possible to get a stop in the field's not only 80 yards. So please, it's Washington. Their offense is not dynamic. Just get a stop in the red zone at home. I mean, if you want to just eliminate them getting in the red zone in the first place, I would accept that as well. But if they do get there, a couple times, at least there's just one stop. Let's just set the bar low, just one stop, and we'll be good to go from there. Number six, make sure that they don't get the passing game, th you know, going through their running backs. You know, Terry McLaurin, and we're going to get to in just a second, they have some weapons down the field, but Antonio Gibson, JD McKissick, both very talented receivers out of the backfield. Remember, Gibson was a receiver at Memphis before uh, Washington drafted him as a running back. He did play a little bit of running back too at Memphis, but primarily was a receiver throughout his career. He has the ability to catch the ball well out of the backfield, as does McKissick. So don't let them just get a ton of checkdowns and easy stuff because McKissick and Gibson are both dynamic after the catch. If you let them just take, you know, those two, three yard uh, receptions, and, you know, they can easily take them into 10, 15 yard gains. gains. So, 
it's important to make sure you're keeping an eye on McLaurin and the rest of this offense, but don't just let Taylor Heineke dink and dunk you to death and let Gibson and McKissick do the heavy lifting. Make sure you're checking them out of the backfield as well. Number seven is be careful with the experimentations. And what I mean by that is, yeah, I'm sure you'd like to get a little bit more Jalen Smith on the field. Maybe you'd like to test out Razul Douglas a little bit more. Maybe you'd like to get Amari Rogers going on offense. You know, maybe you have a couple plays drawn up for Josiah DeGuara eventually. Like, that's all good and grand, and there's a time and a place for that, and maybe you get up big and you can do some of that stuff in the second half, but focus on winning this game first and then maybe play around with some of that stuff. I have much more confidence in just Chris Barnes and Devondre Campbell at linebacker. I know what they're going to give you. You know, give you. know, Maybe Barnes isn't going to give you an A, but he's usually not going to give you an F. Maybe he's not going to give you a B, but he's usually not going to give you a D. It's usually going to be maybe C plus, B minus. And I think that's okay because you don't know if an Oren Burks or a Jalen Smith might give you a D or an F, which could maybe cost you the game. You know, so be careful on this one. If you get a big lead, you know, stuff like that, by all means, try some of that stuff out. But until then, maybe just keep things a little bit more status quo because again, tough part of the schedule is coming up. You want to get out of Lambeau this one with a win. Number eight, have a plan for Terry McLaurin. Uh, whether that's Kevin King, whether that's Eric Stokes, whether that's playing the guy over the top, he is one of the more dynamic route runners. And frankly, while Kevin King and, and, you know, and Stokes have a lot of ability and, you know, technique is obviously up and down. Both of those players, that a weakness can be strong route running against them. And Terry McLaurin's one of the best route running receivers in the entire NFL, and he will turn circles around even the best corners. So I don't know that Eric Stokes is quite ready for that. I don't know that Kevin King has the agility for that. So they're going to have to come up with a plan. Hopefully Darnell Savage is active for this game. Maybe they can put him over the top a little bit more, or Amos a little bit more over the top, but you have to make sure that McLaurin doesn't beat you deep and get come, you know a couple of those explosive plays on offense. Number nine, stay ahead of the sticks on offense. And this kind of goes back to not letting that Washington defensive front just terrorize the game. There's probably going to be some ugly runs in this one, but you got to stick with Jones and Dylan just like you did a week ago against Chicago. You do not want Chase Young and Montez Sweat and that entire group to start taking over the game. That's a recipe for disaster. So keep consistent, keep running the football, stay ahead of the sticks. Don't get in those third and longs because it's a recipe for disaster. Number 10, be wary of a desperate team. If Washington loses this game, they go to two and five, and that's an 11% chance of making the playoffs. In, in going against an NFC that's pretty stacked and you know Dallas is already well out uh, ahead in the NFC East, going two and five would feel like a death blow to Washington, right? Three and four, that bumps you up to a 29% chance and certainly would feel like it would keep your postseason chances alive. So you're basically going from a one in 10 chance to about a one in four chance. That's a huge difference in playoff probability based on, you know, a win or a loss in this game. So this is going to be a desperate team. Their season is arguably on the line in this game. They have to get a win in Lambeau Field against a superior team. So beware that some desperation stuff may take place because Washington has to, has to, have, has to have this game. Number 11 goes right along and pairs nicely with number 10. Watch for trick plays. Again, when you're the superior team, the other team is desperate for a win. They're willing to throw the kitchen sink at you. Fake punts, fake field goals, flea flickers, hook and ladders, whatever the case may be, do not be surprised if Washington comes along. And you remember, this is a this is a coach that you know doesn't mind taking some gambles now and then. I would expect one or two things to be a little out of the ordinary and maybe a couple trickeration plays here or there. Because again, this is probably a desperate team that Green Bay is going to be facing. And then last but not least, there is one storyline that has, I don't believe, been discussed all this week, but Washington does have a major advantage, major, major advantage in this game. And that's in the long snapper battle. Hunter Bradley has struggled. The Washington football team has Cameron Cheeseman as their long snapper. The Cheeseman is coming to Lambeau Field. I, I know their kicker is, the, their, the last name is Blewett, which is probably not a great sign for their kicker or their kicking hopes. But when Cheeseman is snapping you the ball, how could you not do anything but make it up the uprights? Washington has a massive long snapper advantage in this game. The cheese man will be at Lambeau Field. Brian Gutekunst failed miserably this past offseason in not drafting the cheese man. Washington did. 
and now Green Bay could pay the price. Watch out for the cheese man in this game. In all seriousness, I like the Packers. 30 to 21, I'm going to say Packers win by nine. I'm going to say, I guess if they score three touchdowns today, I'm probably still looking bad in the red zone defense, I guess, huh? But I'm going to say 30, 21 Packers. Packers win by nine, get a win, head to Arizona for a marquee matchup with Kyler Murray and the Cardinals on Thursday Night Football. Thanks for joining me. I always appreciate it. Enjoy the game. And as always, go Pack Go.